Welcome to The View from a Pew.com and KTIA Radio 99.3 FM. I'm your host, Reich Plekis, each and every Wednesday and Thursday from here on out on The View from a Pew.com and KTIA at 3 p.m. Join me as I present the greatest gospel artists, small groups, musicians, pastors, authors, apostles, and more, bringing to you the clear and concise word of God locally. Join me, www.theviewfromapew.com and KTIA Radio 99.3 FM at 3 p.m. I hope you'll join me to spread the word powered by GFest and webcast one Live.com. Welcome to 99.3 KTIA FM, The View from the Pew with Reich Plekis and my co-host, the lovely pastor, bishop, cardinal, priest, Woo! pope, <laughs> prophetess, evangelist, wow. deaconess, elder, all right. Judy Chapman. <laughs> Thank Amen. you, Reich. I think I covered all my bases. Sister, man, mother, man. daughter. Yeah. Wow. Wife. <laughs> wife. Yeah. Confidant. Yeah. <laughs> what else can I say? <laughs> the beautiful pastor, Judy Chapman from White Dove Ministries here in Des Moines. Welcome, welcome, welcome. As we used to say in choir, welcome. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> we, can, we can be country, can't we? Well, why not? <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, Pastor Judy, today is Testimony Thursday. It's the last Thursday of the month. And we just take this time that we can sit and just relish in what God has done in and through people through Christ. Amen. Absolutely. And so we're going to take your live testimonies today. We're also going to have a special guest, Pastor uh, Spencer Kuroff from First Church of the Open Bible, be calling us at 855-244-0077, 855-244-0077. But if God has been good to you, mm, mm, good. Yeah. We want to hear from you. We want to know it. Amen. Yeah. I, I'm just going to let you open with prayer real quick, Pastor Judy. Go ahead. Okay. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity to reach out to people, to give them a chance to have their moment to share testimony, uh, what you've done in their life, how you have taken them from glory to glory, touched their lives with healing, brought miracles. Father, anything that they want to testify, we want you to bring it. And Father, we ask that you would bless it and open those doors so they can in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. You know, um, uh, my computer is acting up, so I'm using Mac's computer here. So if I don't look at the camera, I do apologize <laughs> in advance. So, you know, I had to go to the scriptures that I looked up yesterday in regards for preparation for today, for Testimony Thursday. And, you know, sometimes, Pastor Judy, people think that testimonies need to start from the very beginning. You know, I was born, I was abused, I was raised, I was re-raised, I was brought up in the church, I was abused again, I went through this, I was in a bad marriage, I got out of that marriage. And you know, God wants you to return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. Point blank. That's it. And when it says return to home in Luke 8, 39, that means, and he went away proclaiming throughout the whole city how much Jesus had done for him. And so that means you say point A and point B. You know, God brought me out of alcoholism and picked me up, set my feet on solid ground, and here I am, a man of God, serving God, living God, you know, walking out the ministry and the gifts and the callings he's put on my life. Amen. Ah, that's good. Can you agree with that? Yes, I can. All right. Then we're on one accord today. I love that. You, All got, right. you got a twinkle in your eye today. Well, thank you. That must mean you got a, a praise in your skip or a skip in your step, however they say that, both. Yeah, every day. Amen. Every day. You know, the joy of the Lord is our strength. And um, every day, if I set my mind on the things that God's done for me, the testimonies, the real things that he's done for me, what he's brought me through, uh, I, I can't help but be happy. You better preach. Well... You know, it's just true. He is the living God. He is there to meet every single one of you that uh, cries out to him. And I never get tired of saying it. I never get tired of sharing it because I know that we have a powerful God. And I know that Jesus gave his life for us. The least that we can do is give ours for him. And uh, Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation for those who love him. Amen. You know, and with that being said, you know, I think that every testimony needs to be edifying. Yeah. There needs to be edification in the body of Christ. Yeah. You know, um, God doesn't want you just putting your laundry list out there. 
saying what happened to you, what did, what didn't, and and not to have it be used for the glory of God. Right. So the testimony should be to help set another captive free yep. or to help exemplify or exhort what God has done. Yeah. Bring hope. Bring hope, yes. You are so true. Right. I think that's one of the most powerful things about your testimony Come on. is because somebody else who's in the midst of the hardship, the strife, the struggle, the sin, wanting to get out but not knowing how or, you know, getting tired, getting weary, hearing our stories, hearing our testimonies can be the very word that somebody needs to actually come over into victory, to build their faith up, to remind them that God is is the powerful delivering God and can do all for him that they ask. Amen. And uh, Revelation says that they are saved by the blood of the Lamb and the word that. of their testimony. I just read that. Revelation uh, 12, woo. 11. Yeah, that's it. We need it. to do a high five on that one. Yeah. Clap, clap. Clap, clap. There we go. <laughs> Revelation 12, 11 says, and they were conquered. Uh, they have conquered him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, for they loved not their lives even unto death. Yes. Yeah. You are so good. I, I love you. <laughs> oh, thank you, right, Pastor John. I love her. I'm <laughs> blushing. Look, I'm blushing. <laughs> <laughs> we're brothers and sisters. Amen. We are. Amen. I think we're being joined by Pastor Spencer Croft right now from First Church of the Open Bible. How are you, brother? Hey, I'm good. How about you, Reich? Uh, you know what? The joy of the Lord is my strength, and and uh, <laughs> Pastor Judy and I got the strength. We're fighting off some gnats in the studio <laughs> Again? today. We are swatting gnats. <laughs> I oh, feel man. like it's the flight of the locust or something in here. <laughs> but we are delighted that you're joining with us today, and I know you have a, a testimony to tell as well, Pastor. Go ahead. I do. You know, God is uh, God is doing just a fresh work here at uh, at the church, and Amen. you know, I'm I've been at uh, First Church for about 15 months, and um, you know, it's our church is an historic 86 uh, year old church, and sometimes when you've got a church that's that old, uh, there can be a, a series of highs and lows and decline, and uh, and you know, the experts, whoever they are out there on uh, on churches say that once a church is in decline, it's almost next to impossible to see it turned around, to see it start uh, going in a new direction. But God. By God. But God. Uh, and so we are starting to see that. Um, we are starting to see a genuine renewing of the Holy Spirit here at our church. Hallelujah. Uh, people uh, who are accepting Christ. Uh, we just had another baptismal service uh, Sunday night. We did it at Raccoon River Park oh. and had um, uh, six... Uh, technically eight baptisms, but six for those who were for uh, salvation. The other two were a husband and wife that were celebrating their 25th anniversary and wanted to rededicate themselves to God and rededicate themselves to each other. And so they were baptized as well. But uh, man, just out of uh, almost this this decline and discouragement, uh, this church has taken a turn where uh, there's new life here. Awesome. And uh, we, we have determined, in fact, God has made it really clear to us and really simple for us, and maybe because I'm simple-minded, um, that we're going to focus on three areas, and that is that we're going to be Bible-based, gospel-centered, and spirit-empowered. And, and so as we've done that, man, people are coming in the doors. Um, wow. We're seeing people uh, delivered and, and seeking God like never before, and... Uh, so I, I just had to call in and just share with you. I'm, I'm excited. The Lord is up to something of Beaver and Hickman. Amen. You know, I think that you are, are so right on track, Pastor. I mean, you and I had coffee the other day, and, you know, you are just seeking God's wisdom, God's advice, God's right hand for this season, this time, and this, especially this place. You know, it's been spoken over Des Moines by, by other authorities in the past that Des Moines is a dead place and that they will never return. Do you remember that, Pastor Judy? I do, I do. And um, I just come against that and, yep. and think that, you know, how dare some other spiritual leader say that this is a dead place and, and make that judgment call when we have people like yourself, myself, Pastor John and Judy, you know, Pastor Dan and Ann Berry, people who, who strive to live God and serve God and, and share the gospel with others. You know, how dare they, they make that call? You know, well, you know and, and it's interesting because as we focused on those areas, uh, both Paul and Luke 
use the the, the term dunamis for power uh, mm-hmm. in the in the scriptures, and and it's used in Acts one eight when it's talked about the power of the Spirit. It's used in in Romans one sixteen when it talks about the power of the gospel, and it's used in First Corinthians one eighteen when it talks about the power of the message of the cross. Yes. And then what's interesting is Paul then tells us in the last days there's going to be a false church yes. that has a form of godliness, but what? With no power. They deny the power, the dunamis, it's that word again, the dunamis thereof. So if you deny the gospel, the spirit, and the cross, you will be powerless. But when you start emphasizing those things, man, Jesus w- will build his church. There's no deficit in Jesus. So... Anyway, I, I just I thank you, Reich, for letting me just share that because uh, uh, this is a new day for Amen. First Church. Yeah. And I, I know you have a special speaker coming up. I want to get this in before we go to our first break here in Man, five minutes. Do. You have yeah. Dr. Michael Brown coming on September 7th? Yes, yeah, September 7th. Uh, you know, a nationally known speaker. In fact, he's, he's on the station right before you guys are, 99.3 Truth Radio Amen. Network with the Line of Fire. He's going to be just preaching to our church Sunday morning on September 7th, 10 a.m., uh, whatever message God lays on his heart. Sunday night, he's going to be teaching and lecturing on his latest book, Can You Be Gay and Christian? Mm. And, and then once he's done lecturing, we're, we're going to have a couple mics set up, and there's going to be Q&A with Dr. Brown. And uh, so we're just hoping Christian, non-Christian, seekers, uh, you know, people who think we're whacked out uh, would just come and at least engage in the debate itself. You know, and you and I spoke about this, and I am a firm believer, anybody know this, knows me knows this about me, that if just one life is impacted that night, yep, that's yep. what this whole race is about. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And that that person's life be written into the Lamb's Book of Life forever, yes. forever, you know. And yes. so we're just standing in agreement. I'm going to have Pastor Judy pray over your meetings coming up. Mm. Thank you. Uh, with Dr. Michael Brown, and then we're going to take a station break. And if you can stay back with us, we'd love to have you. If not, we totally understand. Go ahead, Pastor sure. Judy. Father, thank you for this. Um, thank you for this pastor who has stepped up. Father, that you've anointed him, you've yes. blessed him, and he is opening his vessel to be used by you. Father, we thank you for the work that's happening in the church. And God, yes. I pray your hand a blessing now as uh, this pastor comes and the speaker to... Pastor Brown. Yeah, yes. Pastor Brown comes to deliver a message, to speak into the darkness and the lies that have held the church uh, people captive. And Father, right. we pray you would break yes. chains off of lives yes. and people would be set free. And we pray uh, your protection over that church as they move forward aggressively, preaching God's word and yes. opening yes. the doors for the the spirit and God's power to move. God, we praise you and bless that in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Thank you. I tell you what, she will pray your eyebrows off, (laughs) Pastor Spencer. You need to get to know Pastor John and Judy Chapman. They're from White Dove Ministries down at 6,000 Douglas at the Ministry Central Building. I think that's what I call it. Yeah. yeah. There's like seven ministries in that building. Yeah. It's Midwest Christian ministries building. Yes. At 6,000 Douglas. And, um, I tell you that she and I connected a long time ago and, and, um, our families just have a, a close knitness amount the she, the she knows the good, the bad, the ugly of me. <laughs> <laughs> you know? It's all right. And, and, um, I, they just love the Lord, Pastor Spencer as, as you do, but we're looking for great things to come. I'm going to mention that again, because I don't have the poster here electronically, but September 8th, Dr. Uh, Mike, September 7th. September 7th, excuse yep. me, uh, Dr. Michael Brown, will be at First Church of the Open Bible, and that's right at the corner of Beaver and Hickman. They're the Christmas tree church. I call, tell everybody they're the Christmas tree church. <laughs> yep. And um, what time are those meetings on the, the 7th? 10 a.m. and 6, and then also Saturday uh, uh, from 11 to 1, 99.3 is sponsoring a Meet the Author time yeah. uh, with pizza from Northern Lights Pizza. So if people want to come, if they can't make it on Sunday and they want to come on Saturday, just meet Dr. Brown, man, they're welcome to come. It's going to be right here at the lobby. Can we call the church if we have any questions, and what is that number? Absolutely, 515-274-9296. That's 274-9296, or firstchurchdsm. Org. Amen. Well, thank you very much. If you could join us after the break, we'd be glad to have you. All right. That's Pastor Spencer Kuroff from First Church of the Open Bible here in Des Moines, Iowa. Pastor Judy, you know what? I'm telling you, God has set up this city. He is he moving. He has set us up yeah. for a total revival experience. Amen. Yeah. Yes. Amen. Revival. That is the word, That right? is the word. You know, like Bonanza. It starts in the middle and just spreads out yeah. across the globe. <laughs> Amen. We're going to take a station break. A word from our sponsor. We'll be right back after this.
From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Visit eMetroFord.com for your guaranteed credit approval. Good credit, bad credit, no credit. Everybody drives with guaranteed credit approval at eMetroFord.com. Visit eMetroFord.com today. If Tom Coates from Consumer Credit of America was your personal webmaster, Tom would filter out all bad debt emails. If Tom was your mailman, you'd never get any debt reduction junk mail. If Tom Coates was a lineman, he'd block any phone calls offering to reduce your credit card debt. Hi, I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of America, and we're still your best choice for credit counseling. We're local, we're accountable, and we can do more. You make the call when the time's right for you. When it comes to competition, there really is none for Consumer Credit of America. Hey, psst. let me let you in on a little secret. You ready? Always try to do business with people, not places. Especially if you seek honest Christian business people. And when it comes to my car, I really need to trust who's working on it. Now, my family is so blessed. A few years ago, we found a family-owned automobile repair shop that operates as a Christian business also. Open, honest, reliable, trustworthy. It's Amco on Hickman Road in front of Kmart. And it's a family-owned Christian operating business. This family treats your car as if it was their car. Everything from oil changes to transmission repair and everything in between. So the next time you feel the need to be at peace with your choice of who you can trust with your car, give Amco on Hickman a chance to serve you. And tell them Max sent you. Get away from us, you mean old credit card. We don't have any more money. We're in trouble now. Save us! Help! Somebody save us! Somebody help! Help! Save us! Hi, I'm Tom Coates from Consumer Credit of Des Moines. If your credit card's a little too animated, give us a call. Hooray! We're saved! Consumer Credit! Yeah! We're back here at 99.3 KTIA FM, The View from the Few, with Reich Plekis and Judy Chapman, inviting everybody to come out September 22nd. That's a Monday night at Cornerstone Family Church, 3114 Southwest 61st, for the Festival of Praise. White people, black people, Chinese people, Hispanic people, all coming together for one corporate night of worship and praise, Pastor Judy. And that's at Cornerstone Family Church with Donnie McClurkin and Fred Hammond. You can get tickets at Cornerstone throughout the week, Monday through Thursday, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m., or you can search Donnie McClurkin in Des Moines at eventbrite.com and get your tickets that way. You know, Pastor Judy, I'm just looking forward to it, you know, because so many times, sometimes we could feel as though we're in our own kind of stagnant water and that, you yeah. know, we feel as though the river's not flowing, but somebody else yep. comes in and imparts and, and makes a deposit. Right. And then that way it's just like a bank. You can take a withdrawal and drink up, you know? Right. And so I just get so excited. We have Pastor Spencer Kuroff on the line with us from First Church of the Open Bible. Pastor Spencer, do you have any personal testimonies that you can give us a brief share before you go? Man, you know, we, we had uh, one of the women in our church who had a liver transplant 22 years ago, and uh, they felt like her kidneys were then shutting down uh, here recently, and uh, they had done a number of tests, and things were proving in that direction, and it was based on the liver medication that she'd been taking that was now affecting her kidneys, and so she had to go up to, to Mayo Clinic uh, about a month and a half ago, and uh, we prayed over her. Uh, actually, uh, let me take that back. We, we prayed over her as she was going, but she'd come down on her own at the altar, unbeknownst to any of us, that this was going on. And uh, she felt like God had touched her body. And uh, she went up to Mayo Clinic, and they found absolutely nothing wrong with her kidneys. She's Hallelujah. completely uh, healed in the kidneys. So, man, God is, God is able 
to do exceedingly abundantly uh, above all we can ask or yes. think. And he's still he's still in the healing business. I mean, with every with with the theology of healing, we have to understand that there's two things that go on. There's there's God's agenda and there's God's ability. And uh, and in this case, his agenda was, yep, I'm going to heal. His ability is always there, but his agenda sometimes is not our agenda. So, but man, I just praise the Lord that he's. Uh, He's willing to do things like that. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Again, I want to reiterate that you have Dr. Michael Brown coming on September the 7th at yes. First Church of the Open Bible, and um, he's going to be presenting and, and ministering to the body there. If they have any questions, they can call First Church at 515-274-9296. And uh, again, our website, First Church DSM, that's davidsammary.org. Great. Well, we're looking for great things to come from these meetings, Pastor, and we want to bring you back on the show afterwards because I know that lives are going to be changed. Amen. 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 Hey, thank you so much, Reich. Thank you. Have a great day. Right. Bye, Pastor Judy. Goodbye. Thank you for sharing, Pastor. Bye-bye. Right. Amen. You know, it's, it's times when you get set up from the neck up like this that you know that you are just set up to be blessed. Yes. You know, and how can lives not be changed? Yeah. And I'm going to say, even if a person comes from a, a different lifestyle, Pastor Judy, you know, if they come even with an open heart, that Christians are not hateful right. people, that they're, you know, we don't want people to think that we're passing judgment because we're not the person to pass judgment. That's right. We're the person called to be used as a vessel to love that person. Right out of where they are. Right. You know, and um, so I just hope that, you know, anybody that does come to those meetings with Dr. Michael Brown at First Church of the Open Bible just comes with an open ear and eye and a heart to receive the word of God and that God laid upon their heart for change to happen, not for us to manifest the change humanly ourselves. Right. The power of the Lord will bring that change if somebody is desiring for it. Amen. God and his power. There is a scripture I'd like to share. Go ahead. First John uh, chapter one. Verses 1 through 4 says, That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, and which we have seen with our eyes, which we looked upon and have touched with our hands concerning the word of life. I read this. <laughs> I read this. I see. The life. I got your scripture, didn't I? <laughs> the life was made manifest, and we have seen it and testify to it and proclaim to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and was made manifest to us, that which we have seen and heard and proclaimed also to you, so that you too may have fellowship with us. And indeed, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ, and we are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. Completed. Yes. And when somebody shares a testimony, doesn't it stir joy in your heart? It does. You know, it brings life yeah, to death is it what it does. does. And, you know, that's what we're supposed to revel in is God's greatness. Yeah. You know, and in Jeremiah 51, 10, it says, the Lord has brought about our vindication. Come, let us declare in Zion that the work of the Lord, our God is done. Yeah. And, you know, for the lady that came forward in Pastor Spencer's church and was just standing in the gap for herself yes. for that healing, you know, she knows by the word of God, by the instruction manual, that it is so. Yeah. And that's that's what we just need to stand on. You know, Pastor Judy, I want to say a special prayer. Um, Celeste, um, my sister Celeste, I think you may remember Celeste. I do. Um, her sister is actually in the hospital as we speak and on a ventilator. Oh. And so... Um, we want to speak life into her sister. I don't have her sister's name, um, but um, uh, it's our sister Celeste, and we just want to speak life into her sister at this time, um, that she's, she's in the hospital and needing prayer, and also just gird up pa uh, Celeste, you know, and, and standing in the gap for her sister as well. Would you mind? Father, we lift up these two women in the name of Jesus. Father, we lift up Celeste to you to uh, be able to keep her strength and her faith up. We do breathe life, and we ask, Holy Spirit, that you would surround her right now with everything that she needs, that she would be able to stay encouraged. Yes. We ask that you would grip her sister and hold her firmly in your hands and breathe through her body, God, and strengthen her so that she can be revived to live out the fullness of life that you have prepared for her, God. And we ask all this in the name of Jesus. Yes. Amen. Amen. You know, God is the author, the giver of life. And, you know, we just have to stand firm on what is his will. 
Right. You know. Right. And um, I tell you what, if he could save a wretch like me, he can he can do marvelous things. Amen. He can. He can. Amen. He can. You know, um, with with that being said, Pastor Judy, you know, we use Testimony Thursday for a time like this to let the world know that there's light. And where there's light, there is no darkness. Right. You know, and that if people just call on the name of Jesus, they know that their prayer will be answered. You know, and um, I just charge people. I charge them to live out their life with Christ and be a light in this very dark place. Right. You know, I was uh, watching on the Internet today on news that a church in China that the, the I hate to say the Republic of China, but the the um, powers to be there have demanded that a cross be removed from the top of a church. Yes. Did you see that? I the, did. So they had a crane taking down this cross and the women and the, the body of the church were singing glory, 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 you know, that they know that they're going to be vindicated through this pers- time of persecution. Right. And we're living in some pretty dark times when our Christian right is being tested. And it's time for us to stand up, not only in the gospel, but in the truth and the light of Jesus Christ, yep. as our daddy is here for us, yeah. that he helps us live and breathe and move and have our being, yeah. that we're going to stand as an army for him on the face of this earth. Yes. Amen. Yes. And, and I just pray for the people of China right now in, in these times, stand as a light, stand as a light where you are. Yep. Amen. Second Timothy, uh, Chapter 1, verses 8 and 9 says, Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share in suffering for the gospel by the power of God, who saved us and called us to a holy calling, not because of our works, but because of his own purposes and grace, which he gave us in Christ Jesus before the ages begin. That means that God saw this coming before he ever started it. We know that he has the the end in his hands, and he's asking us to stand in faith and be bold with our testimony. Scripture declares it. uh, Do not be ashamed of the testimony of God. So don't. And I want to encourage you to be willing to open your mouth and share what God has done for you. Be a light to this dark world. People need the hope and they need the help and they need the truth of Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, I'm going to open up the phone lines right now at 515, excuse me, 855-244-0077. We're going to give away two tickets to Donnie McClurkin and Fred Hammond to the first caller that calls in, 855-244-0077. Again, that's the first caller that calls in. We're going to give them two tickets to to Donnie McClurkin and Fred Hammond, September 22nd at Cornerstone Family Church. And, you know, in speaking in regards to that as well, Pastor Judy, you know that in Psalms it says, when my tongue shall tell of your righteousness and of all your praise all the day long, you will be glorified. Mm. You know, and that's just what he wants us to do. You're right. He just wants us to say his name. You know, when you're in prayer and you can't say anything else, if you just say, Jesus, 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 yep. he hears you. Yes. And he hears your prayer. Yes. And he's going to answer. Yes. He's going to answer. Yes, he is. And so... That's what he wants us to do. He doesn't want us to say, oh, Lord, why is me? Why you put this plague on me? Why is my back hurt me? He just wants to say, Jesus, if you can't say anything else, just call his name. Abba, Father, Jehovah, Jireh, my provider, Ooh. Jehovah, Rapha. Yeah. You know, he just wants us to call on him. Yeah. And he'll make a way he where there will. seems to be no way. He, what do you got? You're on fire. I can I'm tell. I'm just in agreement with you. Yeah, you're just preaching it. You're preaching it just good. Amen. Matthew 5, 16 says, In the same way, let your light shine before others, Amen. so that they may see your good works and give glory to God your Father who is in heaven. You know, it reminds me of the little song that we all learned when we were um, children. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. And, you know, we need to do that. We need to be a light because we are. Amen. And, and, you know, it's just that simple. It is. It is that simple. You know, and, you know, sometimes we get so caught up, so bound up. Say it. In religiosity that we can't have a relationship. Right. And, you know, it, uh, the, the word doesn't say that you have to make a deep doctrinal prayer out of calling your father's name. 
you know, and, and, and I'm not, I'm not, um, downsizing any denominational churches when I say that, but he could take the simplest prayer, come as a child, right? You, a child doesn't come up and say, dear father, I have sinned in thought, <laughs> word, and deed by what I've done and by what I've left undone. You know, <laughs> they don't go into all this doctrinal, right. uh, prayer doxology right. to say, God, can you heal my mom or my dad? Right. You know, can you heal this land? Right. You know, uh, Abba father, I pray for the people in China yeah. that your will be done there, father yes. God. And, and I just, I, I believe that I don't believe that you have to put on a robe I don't believe that you have to put on a, a, a cross or that you have to burn incense right. or, or light a candle. Right. But just call on the name of Jesus. Yep. Yep. That's what the word says. You know, mm. God wants a relationship with us. Come on. He does. And if I sit down with you, Reich, and I come to get to know you, you know, I'm just going to sit and casually speak with you. Amen. But if I don't have that dialogue, if I don't take the time to just ask the simple questions, you know, how are you? How's your day? What'd you do? Let's... Let's talk. I'll never get to know you. What can I do to make a difference? Right, right. Amen. And so, you know, God wants to know uh, your thoughts. He wants to hear you, and he wants to uh, have that relationship with you. Cry out to him. He is your daddy. He is your daddy. Amen. You know, it's, it's like taking a sip of water. He just wants us to take it in. Yeah. Just take him in. Yes. And it's that simple. Of the living water of Jesus Christ. Amen. I, I, I'm about ready to throw my shoe or something up in here. <laughs> God is so good all the time. He is. Oh, he is. I love it. If you have a testimony, call us at 855-244-0077. 855-244-0077. It's getting hot up in here. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Amen. We'll be right back after this. A word from our sponsors. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. I'm Brian Leach, owner and general manager of Service Legends. I brought a long couple of the uh, home comfort heroes. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tammy Wells. I am Nick Wondershot. I'm administrative manager. I'm the senior technician. I'm Service Legends. It seems like every good thing, when you feel it to the bone that it's good, there's a lot of hard work put behind it. You just, I, I don't think that you can fake it and have it turn out good. You know, if we seem like, okay, that's just weird, it's just a furnace, why would you believe so deeply in a furnace? It's not just that, you know, we want to show the world that you can have good service. Yeah, I mean, it's gotta be, it's your home. You know, it's, it's built into our daily trainings, it's built into our culture, um, that we're gonna do whatever it takes to have each client say they love us, period. That's why we spend all the hours in the training that we do, and if we guarantee it's gonna be a good experience for you, or else it's free. What type of work do you think we're going to do? <laughs> there is a guarantee. Temperature selection guarantee, fixed rider it's free guarantee, comfort guarantee, best value guarantee, all of these guarantees hold us accountable to ensuring that we exceed your expectations. And if for whatever reason we'd fail and we can't make it right, we guarantee all of those guarantees with a 100% money back guarantee. I mean, if you don't think that your technician can fix it right, are you going to say that to a client? No. <laughs> You don't have to worry about having a technician come to your house. We drug test, background check all of our team members. We put safe people in your home. Each and every one of our service techs, 400 hours a year in training. You tell it the minute they walk in the door. They know what they're doing, they've done their homework, and they actually truly care about what you want. Because at the end of the day, you're the person that makes sure I have a job. They're gonna be listening. They're gonna wanna know what your challenges are. Then they're gonna come and give you options and, and you get to choose. If I'm there to help and I make it easy and painless, I did my job right that day. Well, when it comes to your comfort, safety, and your family. You know, you don't necessarily go buy the most expensive, but you get the most bang for your buck. Oh, it's worth it because there's a lot of people that will find a way to get it to work right now and then leave and then come back, charge you again. And, and the cycle just repeats itself. So when I'm out there looking at the furnace, I want to find why it failed the day. How can we change the part today with something that you're not going to have to worry about? Is it worth changing the part today? I mean, you can put a lot of money into a furnace. I can fix parts all day. There's good job security in that for me. But is it the right thing for you? I get a lot of the phone calls of after the technicians are there. They're just in awe. They're like, wow, you guys are great. I mean, I don't even know what to say. You guys are great. Everything you did is perfect. It's great. <laughs> Keep going, though. I like this. <laughs> just give us a try. I'm going to take all the risk. I've got the time to make this right. I've got the support to make it right. Just check us out. And if you don't see the value in what we do. I mean, fixed writer, it's free or 100% money back. Enough said.
Welcome to The View from a Pew.com and KTIA Radio 99.3 FM. I'm your host, Reich Plekis, each and every Wednesday and Thursday from here on out on The View from a Pew.com and KTIA at 3 p.m. Join me as I present the greatest gospel artists, small groups, musicians, pastors, authors, apostles, and more, bringing to you the clear and concise word of God locally. Join me, www.theviewfromapew.com and KTIA Radio 99.3 FM at 3 p.m. I hope you'll join me to spread the word powered by GFest and webcast one live.com. Amen. We're back here at 99.3 KTIA FM, The View from the Pew with Reich Plekis and Pastor Judy Chapman from White Dove Ministries here in Des Moines, encouraging everybody to come out to the Festival of Praise with Donnie McClurkin and Fred Hammond on September 22nd at Cornerstone Family Church, 3114 Southwest 61st. You can get tickets at the church at Cornerstone Monday through Thursday, 9 a.m. through 3 p.m. They're on sale there for the general admission seats, or you can get them online at Eventbrite by searching for Donnie McClurkin in the city of Des Moines, and you'll find them there on Eventbrite. I want to give a shout out to our sponsors, Platinum Sponsor, Iowa Gospel Festival, Pastor Dan and Barry of Cornerstone Family Church, Pastor Kunta and Angela Naimiba. I always mispronounce it. I'm so sorry. Love me anyway, okay? Lauren, she does. Craig Griffith, Sean and Tara Jarrett, Patton's Restaurant and Catering, um, also Henderson Funeral Home, Donna and Walt Henderson, Elder James and Regina McNear, Pastor Michael and Shanice Cameron from Revival Center Church of God in Christ, and Jenny and Patrick uh, Roberts Lewis, Jennifer uh, Lu- uh, Roberts of Studio Trends. We thank you so much for helping to bring this Festival of Praise to Pass here in Des Moines, September 22nd, Monday night at Cornerstone Family Church. Remember, you can get your tickets at the church Monday through Thursday, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m., or online at Eventbrite by searching Donnie McClurkin in Des Moines, Iowa. And you know, Pastor Judy, 1 John 1, 2, and 3 says, the life was made manifest, and we have seen it and testify to it and proclaim that eternal life is here, which was with the Father and was made manifested to us, that which by we seen and heard and proclaim also to you so that we may have fellowship with us, that indeed our fellowship is with the Father and the Son of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. That means we're to sit down and have food. We're to sit down and have the meat potatoes with Jesus, you know, sit down and share the gospel, sit down and share our testimony. And, you know, I can understand sometimes people don't want to testify of the goodness of what God has done, and maybe they don't want to do it on the radio, but I'd rather do it here then go to church because you have to see the people the next week at church, you know, and, (laughs) and some people, they cannot live out their sin. They can't live out of it. You know, they can't say, let's say I was a smoker okay, and I say, God set me free from smoking. And then all of a sudden somebody sees me light up in the car on the way leaving church. Right. (laughs) So, so I'm saying, you know, that, that scripture says, sit down, have the meat and potatoes, let the Holy Spirit manifest in you, through you, with you, to you, for you, Right, is what it's saying. And that have fellowship, have fellowship. Yeah. You know, um, if, if a family person came to you for counseling and was trying to divorce proof their marriage, okay. how can they divorce proof it if they don't make it clear that they need help in something. Right. And for you to say as a counselor to them, you know, I'm not here to say you did wrong or she did wrong or he did wrong. What can we do to make the situation right? You know? And so I, I don't believe that you pass judgment on those people that come to you, but you bring light to a dark situation. Right. Amen. Right. I, I do help them. I, I don't judge them or accuse them, but truly when people come to me, if I don't dig into their lives with the word of God to find out where the sin happens, I can't help them. So, you know, we're so afraid of that word sin. It sounds so bad. You know, there's been such a bad uh, thing attached to it. But actually, if you don't confess your sin, you can't find that freedom and you won't have the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life to be able to set you free. Yes, so, yes. you know, we're born into sin and we're shaped in iniquity. We can't help but live sinful lives and we can only be set free from that by the power of Jesus Christ. So, you know, man, confess it, get it out there. Amen. Say it, you know. Well, you know, John 15 says we're to, we're to bear witness. Yes. We are to bear witness. And, um, you know, 
even as the testimony about Christ was confirmed amongst us, we need to bear that witness of, of the good works of Jesus Christ yes. and hold our brothers and sisters accountable. Yeah. If we feel as though that our elected politicians or officers are not doing their jobs applicably, yeah. it is up to us as a tax paying citizen because we are paying Caesar what's due Caesar. That's in the word right? to hold them accountable. And so go back to, go back to courts, go back to legislature, go back to the house of the Senate and say, I elected you mm -hmm. to govern this land yes. and you are not doing as I elected you. Right. And, and you know, that's a lot like, um, the, the, the bit of accountability that if you have ought with your brother or sister, you go to your brother or sister, you have ought with, and, and you bring it to light. If you can't bring it to light, then you take it to a pastor. If you can't bring it to your pastor, you bring it to the church. Right. And so, you know, we, we need to stand firm on God's promises to, to see that manifestation and then proclaim and give thanksgiving aloud. Psalms 26 and seven says giving pray, proclaiming thanksgiving aloud and telling and of his wondrous deeds. Right. Amen. Yeah. You know, Paul says in second Timothy, uh, you know, Paul suffered greatly to bring us the gospel Come on. in the way that he did. Come on. And yet he was not ashamed and he didn't, um, he didn't feel like it wasn't due him because he understood God had a plan and a purpose. Yes. Every single place God put him in, he, he was able to endure great, great, uh, excess and he was able to endure great loss. He understood it was all for the glory of God. And he says in chapter one, verse 12, that is why I am suffering as I am. Yet I am not ashamed because I know whom I have believed. And I am convinced that he is able to guard what I have entrusted to him for that day. And so you must know whom you have believed to the point where you are convinced that no matter what you're going through, it's okay because you know that God has a plan and a purpose in all things and he will glorify himself yes. and his name to those around you in your life. And you never know uh, what God is doing in, in your suffering or in your victorious living, you never know what God is doing. So give your testimony, bring it. You know, that is so true. And I just looked up a scripture as you were reading this and I went to uh, John 5 and 31. If I bear witness about myself, my testimony is not deemed true. Ah, that is a really good scripture. And, and that goes right along with what you're saying. You know, he wants us to proclaim what he has done. Yeah. Give him the glory. Yes. You know, you, and I'm not downsizing what, what other programs do, whether it be AA or Smokers Anonymous or whatever's out there, but we're to give God the glory. Yes, we and are. And if our programs are built around godly principles, then why not give God the glory? Yeah. You don't give the, the, the program instructor the glory, you know, through your teaching, through your guidance, you set me free from alcoholism or smoking or whoredom or whatever it may be. But through the goodness of Jesus Christ, I have been set free. Come yes. on, Pastor Judy. I know yes. you've got something. Ah, I'm, I'm looking for it. <laughs> I'm looking for it. Oh, Proverbs uh, chapter 28, uh, verse 26 says, um, he who trusts in him, he who trusts in himself is a fool. Come on. Yeah. But he who walks in wisdom is kept safe. Say that again. Yeah. He who Proverbs trusts, what? Yep. Proverbs 28, oh, verse 26. He who trusts in himself is a fool. Mm. Mm, don't want to be a fool. Come on. But he who walks in wisdom is kept safe. Amen. You know, if scripture says to trust in God, to give God all the glory, to put your trust in the one who knows everything about you, I would do it. Amen. I just want to do that. You know, we're, we're taught, and I haven't found this in scripture yet, I need to research this, but to, to leave our sins at the cross, bring our sins to the foot of the cross and leave them. Right. And if that's how we're taught, Pastor Judy, why would we pick them back up again? Oh, yeah. No. Uh, we got a caller in. We're going to take you right now, and we're going to put you on hold for a moment and see what's up with more. 99.3 KTIA, The View from the Pew, with Minister Reich Black and Pastor Judy Chapman from White Dove Church here in Des Moines, Iowa. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with a word from our sponsors after this.
from the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios. This is Webcast One Live. Visit eMetroFord.com for your guaranteed credit approval. Good credit, bad credit, no credit. Everybody drives with guaranteed credit approval at eMetroFord.com. Visit eMetroFord.com today. If Tom Coates from Consumer Credit of America was your personal webmaster, Tom would filter out all bad debt emails. If Tom was your mailman, you'd never get any debt reduction junk mail. If Tom Coates was a lineman, he'd block any phone calls offering to reduce your credit card debt. Hi, I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of America, and we're still your best choice for credit counseling. We're local, we're accountable, and we can do more. You make the call when the time's right for you. When it comes to competition, there really is none for Consumer Credit of America. Get away from us, you mean old credit card. We don't have any more money. We're in trouble now. Save us! Help! Somebody save us! Somebody help! Help! Save us! Hi, I'm Tom Coates from Consumer Credit of Des Moines. If your credit card's a little too animated, give us a call. Hooray! We're saved! Consumer Credit! You're the more hero! Welcome to The View from Pew.com and KTIA Radio 99.3 FM. I'm your host, Reich Plekis, each and every Wednesday and Thursday from here on out on The View from Pew.com and KTIA at 3 p.m. Join me as I present the greatest gospel artists, small groups, musicians, pastors, authors, apostles, and more, bringing to you the clear and concise word of God locally. Join me, www.theviewfromapew.com and KTIA Radio 99.3 FM at 3 p.m. I hope you'll join me to spread the word powered by GFest and webcast one live.com. Welcome back to 99.3 KTIA FM, The View from the Pew, with Reich Plekis and Pastor Judy Chapman of White Dove Ministries here in Des Moines, encouraging everybody to come out to Festival of Praise. That's Monday, September 22nd at Cornerstone Family Church, 3114 Southwest 61st Street here in Des Moines. Tickets are on sale at Cornerstone Monday through Thursday, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the church for $35 or $45, $45 at the door. Or you can get them at Eventbrite by searching Donnie McClurkin in Des Moines. That's Donnie McClurkin and Fred Hammond live Festival of Praise, Monday, September 26th. Gospel Festival, and also our gold sponsors, Craig and Laura Griffith, Sean and Tara Jarrett, Patton's Restaurant and Catering, Pastor Kunta and Angela, Henderson's Funeral Home, also Elder James and Regina McNear, Pastors Michael and Shawnee Cameron, and Revival Center, and also as well, Studio Trends, Jennifer Lynn, Roberts Lewis, and Patrick Lewis. Thank you so much for your gifts, your time, your talent, and your treasure. We're here at Testimony Thursday today at The View from a Pew. If you have a testimony that you'd like to share with us, call us at 855 2 Two four four zero zero seven seven eight five five two four four zero zero seven seven, or you can hit me on Facebook, and we'll keep you anonymous that way. We'll just share the love of Christ Ooh. with you. You got anything, Pastor Judy? Well, Second Corinthians chapter four thirteen says, "Since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what has been written, I believed, and so I spoke." That's what was written. Amen. And so he says, we also believe, and so we also speak. Um, I'm going to say that again. Since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what has been written, I believed, yes. and so I spoke, we also believe, and so we also speak. Mm. And because we have the same faith of those who spoke and wrote, the, and the scriptures came to uh, the written word that we have here that yes. brings us yes. life, we have that same faith. Yes. And so we speak in, likewise, bringing life to people who hear what we have to say. Amen. It's the same faith. Amen. You know, God doesn't want us to lose faith. 
He doesn't. He wants us to grow in him, through him, in, you know. And, you know, I'm, I, I was just reading this right now. And, you know, uh, the cross at uh, Yahui Church in Pingyang County, uh, China, was forcibly removed on Friday morning because it's already Friday there. Believers burst into tears, tears and sang the Chinese hymn, Cross, Cross, Be My Glory Forever. All my sins have been washed away by the blood of Jesus. Mm. And, you know, I'm just stating that everybody on the airwaves that are listening, she, please just, you know, we live in a free country for now, you know, but pray for China. Yeah. Pray for the Christians that are in China that yeah. are being persecuted, oh. that they stand, that they stand for the righteousness in Jesus Christ, right. that they know that they've been washed by the blood, yeah. that they, they know that they're serving a living God, a breathing God, somebody that moves and has his being. Yeah. And so we just pray for uh, Yehuri Church in China, in Pingyang County in China and, and the people there as well. You know, Pastor Judy, I truly believe these are the last days. I do too, Reich. I do. And I think that, you know, with all the turmoil that's going on, you know, around the world, even here at home with Michael Brown um, uh, incident in Ferguson, Missouri, that, you know, we all just need to put our hands up in praise yeah. and proclaim that Jesus Christ is a living King, that yep. he is God of gods, yep. that he is almighty living yeah. savior, yeah. you know, and that he is the same yesterday, today and tomorrow, yeah. you know, and that, you know, we can sit there and say, put your hands up, don't shoot, but we can say, put our hands up. We serve Christ, Yes. you know, yeah. and stand for the gospel. Amen. Amen. We are so fortunate that we live in a country absolutely that gives us the freedom to praise and worship on, him. Yes. We are so fortunate yes. that we have this freedom and we want to uh, pray that God will continue to give us this freedom. So yes. join us in prayer, in praying for our freedom. And yes, Let's join our hearts and pray for the Christians in China and, you know, pray for the Christians overseas that are under incredible persecution. It happens every day to men, women, and children. And we want to know that as many as are called for salvation and appointed to it had the chance to receive it. And so pray that the gospel is preached in every corner of the world. All over the world. Yes. You know, whether you be in Des Moines, Iowa, or Chicago, Illinois, or Kansas City, Missouri, or Boise, Idaho, <laughs> you know, we serve a mighty God. We do. And, you know, people have to pay the price for what they're doing. Yes. And I'm going to hope and pray that that price is salvation, Pastor Judy. Yeah. So we pray for those lost, you know, yeah. we it's, really do. Yeah. You know, um, we're coming up on a, a new month and... Um, uh, J. Michael McCoy is going to be giving his testimony at Testify next week. And uh, I want to pray an encouraging word for him that God moved through him mightily in that testimony. You know, he's been on the airways a long time yeah. in secular radio. Yeah. And sometimes I know that when you give your testimony that that's probably the hardest thing that you can do. It can be. But um, we're going to just pray that, you know, even if one life is changed by the word that comes from Mac, um, you know, he, he, he got set up by God to walk this walk and run this race that he's running. So I want to encourage him as well, yeah. uh, today for that next, uh, Ryan, tell me if you, if you got that, is that September 3rd or is it Thursday or Wednesday? Wednesday, we're going to pray for Mac for testify, uh, the group there as well. And, uh, just be encouraging to Mac and, uh, to this land, um, Father, we come to you in prayer, Father God, that we just sit down with you at your table and eat and drink of the goodness of you. Yeah. We pray an encouragement over this land, yeah. a healing of this land, Father yeah. God. We pray for our leaders. We pray for our pastors. We pray for Christians, no matter where they are, mm -hmm that your light will always continue to shine. Yeah. We pray for the festival of praise that it comes and leaves a mighty deposit in this city where it's much needed. We pray for our government. We pray for our citizens. We pray for our neighbors, our brothers, sisters, parents, grandparents, that your will be done, Father God, and that you just bring healing to this land, bring healing to this land where it's much needed. Father God, and start with me, 
if that if I have aught in my heart that you remove it from this vessel and you make me a holy vessel to do what you've called me to do, Father God. I thank you for the sponsors that have made this show possible, that you give them credit where credit is due and that you bless them abundantly. Yeah. In Jesus' name we pray that your matchless works be done and go forward yes. and that we never go backward in Jesus' name. Yeah. You're a mighty Father God. You're Abba. You're my big daddy. I could come to you in times of trouble. I could come to you in times of praise and know that you're going to lift me up and guide me on the walkways of this life. And only through you, Jesus Christ, by the blood that you shed for my transgressions shall I be set free. God is good, Pastor Judy. Yes, he is. Yes, he Ooh, is. Oh, Lord Jesus, it's one of those times. Yes, he is. Amen. And, you know, I just want to, again, encourage people to give their testimony. Amen. 